Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Vision of Escaflone Retrospective. With Alan examined, it's time we get to the next of the big three characters in this series, and that is Van, or Vaughn, depending on whether you prefer the subbed or dubbed version of Escaflone. I will use the names interchangeably. Now while Vaughn is not as layered as Alan, he certainly isn't bad. In fact, after the Alan video, I find Vaughn's rather straightforward and honest nature to be quite refreshing. In fact, of the big three, Vaughn is probably the simplest, but that is quite in line with his blunt and action-minded mindset, and it's not a criticism of the character. That's not to say he doesn't grow either, as Vaughn's character arc is a subtle but appreciated one, as he learns to balance his impulsive side with a rationale born of the desire to do the greater good. He is a young man that, while a tad impulsive, is still rather mature for his age, although does suffer the pitfalls of having to be forced to grow up too quickly. His growth continues throughout the series, though, and his relationship with Fitomi and even his brother display a young man coming into his own, and one who learns the importance of not only taking care of others, but of taking care of himself. For all of these reasons, I consider him to be quite respectable, even if he isn't the most refined. So as always, let's start with Vaughn's place in the plot. Now Vaughn enters the series from the very first episode, when he, somehow, ends up chasing a dragon into the real world. Now, he has to kill this dragon in order to claim its energist and therefore be deemed worthy to be crowned King of Finalia. This sees him accidentally bring Hitomi along, though, to Gaia, and sees her also attend his coronation, which happens conveniently soon after they both arrived at Finalia. However, due to the machinations of Dornkirk, Finalia is soon burned, and Vaughn is forced to enter Escaflone to both rescue Hitomi and attempt to rescue his kingdom. Unfortunately, though, he fails and is forced to flee after watching most of his kingdom and many of his closest teachers die before him. This leads to the first meeting with Alan in the swamp. While Alan is initially suspicious in Vaughn's eyes, the two soon grow close together as they work together to reach Palace in order that, so that Vaughn can ask the King of Astorius for help. Along the way, though, Vaughn is captured and this sees the first meeting he has with Falcon, his older brother. Now up until this point, Vaughn had simply assumed that Falcon was dead and had kind of moved on from that point. Although it isn't quite established in this episode, we will soon learn that Falcon and Vaughn were actually quite close as children and Vaughn did nothing but adore and look up to Falcon. As such, this establishes a great betrayal which kind of emotionally stuns Vaughn in some ways. Although Vaughn is soon rescued from Falcon's captivity and soon joins with Alan and the rest of the group to get to Palace, the capital of Astorius. However, in said capital, Vaughn has another meeting with Falcon, which ends up solidifying the rift between the two. Even if Falcon does seem to still love his brother, Vaughn sees his brother with nothing but contempt, not quite understanding Falcon's place in the world, and not quite accepting many of his views. We will learn over time that both brothers are kind of right and both kind of wrong, and that they do probably reconcile somewhat near the end of the series. However, before this can occur, the Landau basically chases Vaughn out of the kingdom, and he, along with Hitomi and, Mer and Merle, flee palace. Along the way, they end up burning a mine, and this sees Vaughn have to rescue Hitomi from falling down a great chasm. This sees Vaughn reveal his wings, as he must fly, and come out as half draconian, a race of so-called cursed descendants of Atlantis. Hitomi takes no issue with this, however, and this soon sees Vaughn open up about some of his childhood. It seems that as a child, Vaughn was actually extremely nice and caring, somewhat sheltered in fact, as both his parents and his older brother Falcon did their best to ensure that he had a happy childhood. However, with Falcon's failure to kill the dragon, and the departure of his mother to go look for Falcon, Vaughn's childhood is thrown into disarray, as soon everything around him collapses and he is forced to become king of a kingdom he never thought he would ascend to. This does a good job setting up his character as one that is forced to grow up too quickly and suffers some of the pitfalls associated with it. Back to the plot, Vaughn joins along with the rest of the cast on the way to the Duchy of Freyd in order to defend it from a Zybok attack. This doesn't go too well however as he is first arrested by the Duchy's government on suspicions of trying to attack the Duchy and later proves his innocence only to see near death in the Battle of the Fortuna Temple. Here it is established that, in order to get Escaflone to work, Vaughn has established a blood pact with it, it's essentially sharing damage with the mech. He is, however, saved when Dryden does agree to pay for repairs to Escaflone, and thus repairs Vaughn. When feeling 100% again, Vaughn decides to take some retribution, and successfully engages and kills all the Dragon Slayers under Delandale's command. 
Although he is about to kill the Landau, he is prevented from doing this when the ghosts of the fallen dragon slayers essentially drag Vaughn to the Shadow Realm. In said Shadow Realm, Vaughn and Hitomi have a spiritual meeting of sorts, where she essentially convinces him that life is worth living and that he needs to move on. While Vaughn is rescued from the Shadow Realm, it does however lead him into a sort of slump as he has to come to terms with having finally killed someone. He eventually does do this though, and confronts his fear of inadequacy and his fear of combat when he talks to the ghosts of Balgus in Atlantis, which he had agreed to accompany Dryden and the rest of the group too. After the visit to Atlantis, he, along with Hitomi and Alan, is transported to Zybok, where honestly not much happens and they manage to escape, and he then re regroups with everyone in Asturias. Of course, he's grown quite close to Hitomi by this point, although hasn't quite mastered expressing himself, and so kind of bungles the confession in a rather awkward scene in this windmill. This leads up to the Hitomi scene, and Vaughn basically conceding the victory to Alan at least for this point. However, Vaughn still wants to work for the greater good and sticks around in order to both support Dryden's war efforts and in order to get back at his brother, someone which whom he seems to be personally offended by at this point. In fact, Vaughn's unhealthy desire to get back at his brother starts to border on obsession and his great mass of pent-up emotions seem to be directed unduly towards Falcon. However, he does eventually manage to get the Falcon and Falcon's apparent death doesn't really settle much for Vaughn. Falcon's death was not confirmed though, and it turns out that he escaped the Finalia and now seeks to reconcile with his brother in order to sell out Dornkirk. This sees the meeting between the two brothers in the burned out ruins of the kingdom, and it sees Falcon impart to Vaughn what he's been trying to tell him. That sometimes conflict isn't the best answer, and that sometimes we must talk and express how we feel in order to understand and move on. This sees the two brothers finally reconcile, and it finally sees Vaughn kind of come to terms with Falcon. He tolerates him at this point. He hasn't quite forgiven him. Anyways, Vaughn goes on a few more battles with Alan, one of which Hitomi psychically witnesses through their bond, and this repulses Hitomi enough that she decides to go back to Earth for a little bit. Hitomi and Vaughn, however, still feel for each other quite strongly, and their strong emotions are enough to open the portal back up to Gaia and see Hitomi and Vaughn finally confess to each other and finally stick together. For about a day and a half as Hitomi gets sent back to the castle so that Vaughn can fight in one last big battle. In said big battle, Vaughn does pretty well, although he does again give in to rage as he attempts to kill the Landau. However, by this point, the Landau has reverted back to Selina, and Alan steps in in order to save his brainwashed sister. He successfully holds off Vaughn, although Vaughn is only convinced to stop once Hitomi reaches out to him from Zybok and says, Hey, you know what? Your brother would have got kind of a point. Sometimes we need to talk. This conflict isn't necessary, and you need to stand down. This snaps Vaughn out of his bloodlust and sees him spread his wings and fly to Zybok in order to be with Hitomi. The stunning sight of which calms down the combatants on the battlefield and essentially ends the war. Busting in the Dornkirk's throne room, Vaughn then embraces Hitomi as the two finally share each other's feelings for each other and seem to be happy. The next scene sees Vaughn and Hitomi back in Finalia, some point in the future, it's being rebuilt, this is basically the credit scene, and the two confess to each other as Vaughn finally seems to be comfortable with himself and expressing himself. And while confessing his feelings to Hitomi one more time, he sees her off as she has to return to her world. However, he does make an appearance here showing that he is still watching over her. With all this in mind, let's look at Vaughn's character. Now, as a character, Vaughn is a rather straightforward one. Although this is not a knock on him, and I appreciate the straightforwardness of it. His character development is one that follows a general trend of a young person struggling to deal with having big responsibilities foisted upon them, and the resultant big emotions that come with this, although he ultimately does step up to the task at hand and grow into quite a good young man. Vaughn is a great example of a young man learning how to juggle responsibility with his own limitations and emotions, of someone learning how to balance caring for others with caring for himself, and of impulse and the desire to do good with the calculation and restraint necessary to make sure that all actions are planned accordingly for the best possible outcome. In a sense, Vaughn is a character that learns to express himself, accumulating with opening up to Hitomi and probably forgiving Falcon. At the core of Vaughn's character is the idea of responsibility, and balancing one's own needs with the needs that others have of them. 
As a king, Vaughn must think not only of himself, but also of his state and of his people. Although Vaughn never asked for these responsibilities, and honestly didn't expect them since Vulcan was supposed to be king, he does see how important they are, and attempts his best in order to meet them. To this end, Vaughn has an excellent work ethic, and his surprisingly strong, but not unbreakable, sense of empathy. He is willing to seek and accept help from others, and is always trying to improve himself or the general state of affairs. He is in fact consumed by this drive of his, and in this lies some of his imperfections. While Vaughn is a young man trying extremely hard at all times, this does cause himself to wear himself thin. In a sense, his obsessive quest to be the best king possible is, as a byproduct, a quest to grow up as quickly as possible in order to be a good king, and this does cause some undesirable traits to appear. Starting with on the most surface level, Vaughn lacks the confidence of someone who has had all the time and experience necessary to be a good ruler. As someone who is quite young and as someone who is essentially learning on the job, he does deal with a sense of inadequacy which crops up from time to time. Although it never quite cripples his character, it is one which lurks in the background and it does lead him to question both his own judgment sometimes and his own course of action. As a result, while he is a decent king at, at the beginning, he is one which doesn't necessarily have any sense of direction, it's even after his kingdom has been burned. I mean, there is a general plot here. He wants to get back at Vulcan, and he wants to prevent Zybok from taking out any other kingdoms, but that's about it. He is inadequacy, haunts him as he questions if he's doing the right thing, especially since his course of action isn't necessarily 100% thought out. This also leads to a fear of battle, which again, Escaflone says that combat is not glorious. However, Vaughn's conversation with Balgus does tell us that sometimes confrontation, at least in self-defense, is necessary, and sometimes we must step up to the hard facts of life. Something which Vaughn is trying very hard to do, but does not manage to do 100% of the time. He does, however, learn to overcome the sense of inadequacy and become a more competent version of himself. This, however, is not always for the best, as it does feed into his rather impulsive nature. Now, Vaughn is never stupid, and he's never portrayed as stupid. Although he does give in to impulses from them time to time when he loses patience and thinks he can simply blunt force a solution, or if he simply gets frustrated. He does give in to emotional urges, even when they not be maybe the best for him, or if they may not be very rational. We see this multiple times throughout the series, whether it's his unhealthily strong desire to kill his brother, or if he's just flying around blowing up mines. The point here is that the, the pressure of the responsibilities of being king so Yvonne looked for the quickest solutions possible, even if they're not the most rational. He has forced himself to become a man of action, though he hasn't quite mastered the self-control and planning necessary to make sure that every action is a calculated one. In addition, Vaughn tends to subconsciously bury his emotions in order to remain as composed and kingly as possible. He knows that others are depending on him and doesn't want to risk failing them through some emotional fault of his own. He wants to remain as strong as possible in order to serve them and sees emotional breakdown or emotional expression as a possible weakness that could hinder this task. As such, he tends to get rather wound up from time to time as a young person essentially being forced to grow up. Vaughn tries to be an adult without all of the emotional development gained along the way of becoming an adult. The straining circumstances around him force him to step up before he's quite emotionally ready to, and to compensate, he kind of just ignores his emotions, and while this does keep his head in the game, it also means he tends to come off as aloof and even rude sometimes, even though he really isn't. This also means that there is a concentrated knot of rep repressed emotions at his core, and since these emotions are expressed consistently, they tend to build up and contribute to impulsive decisions from time to time, when his emotional stress level passes the level of self-control that he has installed over himself. While Vaughn is established as flawed though, he isn't doomed, and he does do quite a bit of learning throughout the series. In fact, him learning to control his emotions and impulses, with Hitomi's help of course, is a great arc for him. While Vaughn remains impulsive up until the last episode, it's obvious that Hitomi has had a good influence on him, and he genuinely cares for her, as it's shown that he is slowly learning to control his impulses with her guidance. He is learning self-control, and part of this is opening up to others, something he initially struggles with. At first it may seem odd that someone so blunt as Vaughn may have trouble opening up, but it does make a lot of sense in context. In context, Vaughn is someone who lives with a sense of betrayal due to Falcon's fate, and the fact that Falcon later ended up joining Dornkirk. Now, it is established later on that Falcon did this because he basically had to, 
I mean, realistically, Dornkirk did literally save his life and agrees with him on some surface points of ideology, so him joining Dornkirk kind of made sense. However, Vaughn doesn't know a lot of this, and that doesn't change the fact that Falcon was there for the burning of the kingdom, which, you know, that's a pretty big betrayal. This perceived betrayal on Falcon's part makes Vaughn very weary of opening up to anyone else. As mentioned earlier, it has been established that the two brothers were very close growing up. To Vaughn, if his beloved brother betrayed him, then surely anyone else could. And while he doesn't handle this horribly, he isn't inherently distrustful or rude, he is quite walled off from others and, as a result, has trouble expressing himself. This is a sort of emergency maneuver that Vaughn imposed upon himself in order to grow up as quickly as possible. Vaughn never really got over Falcon's fate, and he never really got over the loss of a brother that he loved so much growing up. And so, he just kind of ignores how he feels and sulks over it every now and again in order not to be completely consumed by his sense of loss and his sense of betrayal. He's kind of putting a band-aid over this instead of addressing it in order to remain as resilient as possible. As the series progresses though, and Vaughn becomes more open and dependent and enamored with Hitomi, he does soften up and is in turn starts to express himself. The biggest turning point after he rescues her and shows her his wings, something which he is not supposed to do, as it's not supposed to be known that he's half draconian. This is a great metaphor as while he physically opens up, i.e. he literally spreads his wings, he also shares something which is incredibly secret and in a sense is kind of forced to open up emotionally. He tells Hitomi the story of his parents, the story of his relationship with Falcon, and just general personal information. The fact that she takes it so well, and that the fact that she seems to adore his wings, enforces to him that maybe opening up to others is okay. Maybe I can trust others with how I feel. Maybe there's no need to be so uptight all the time. This trend continues as the two fall more and more in love with each other, and eventually confess each other's feelings. In fact, while the couple isn't really official until the very end of the series, there is a lot of groundwork laid for it throughout the series, and it is consistent. Vaughn seems to like Hitomi because she provides not only practical skills, i.e. dowsing and that kind of thing, but also emotional support, and because, as someone who's basically alone in this new world, understands what it's like to be without what you're used to. Vaughn, in this case, having lost his kingdom and his family. Hitomi, meanwhile, sees someone who, that while well impulsive, is genuinely caring, and is genuinely trying his best to do the best. She appreciates that, and she appreciates the fact that he struggles, but admittedly does, open up to her. She can see that it's difficult for him, and does appreciate the effort that he puts into doing so. This sets up the two to get along quite well and eventually fall in love with each other, as Hitomi learns how Vaughn feels, and Vaughn learns how to express how he feels. He learns that in talking about emotion is important, and that sometimes speech is just as important as action. He needs to express himself, and learns how to do so with Hitomi's help, in order to become the king he's always wanted to be.